Now, sometimes we're going to want to be a little bit more sophisticated with how we're storing items in our cache. In those cases, we want to use some policies and possibly a priority for the items that we store in the cache. So right now, as we've stored our demo key and demo data in the cache, we didn't specify anything about priority or anything about expiration. So by default, the priority is going to be normal and it will never expire. So it's not going to automatically expire from the cache. But that doesn't mean that it'll never be removed from the cache. If your system is running low on memory, the cache manager is going to be smart enough to remove some items from cache, even though they're not going to necessarily expire, but because it needs to free up some space in that cache. So this is where priority will come in. Let's take a look at this overload that we have for add here. So with cache manager, we can call add with just the key and the value, but we can also call it with this other overload here. And let's go over these items here. So we have the key, which we'd seen before, the value. Now we have a catch item priority. And this is the scavenging priority, which is basically how vulnerable this item is when the scavenging occurs on the cache in order to free up some memory. And there's enumeration of some values that we can provide here from low to high. And we can also specify that an item is not removable. We have this iCache item refresh action, and this is more of an advanced topic that we'll get into in the last module, but it basically gives you a way to be able to refresh an item in the cache when it's removed in order to get the new value. Then we have an array of cache item expirations, which are basically policies that you can apply to your cache item to see when it's expired. And this is an array here, so you can provide multiple ones of these. And if any of them are met, then that item is considered to be expired. So let's look at a few of the simple expiration policies that we can apply here. So we'll start off with the absolute time policy. So we'll create a new variable. We'll call it absolute time. And here we're going to do a new absolute time. And we can specify a time span here. So for example, we can do time span dot from hours and five. So in this case, it would mean that our cash item will expire five hours from now. So we can add our item. So let's go ahead and add demo two and we'll put it as other data. And then we have to fill in the rest of the signature here. So for a priority, you can see we have an enumeration here. We can do normal, high, low, none are not removable. We'll just go ahead and do normal here. And then we're not going to specify a refresh action. So I'm just going to put null here. And then we're going to specify an expiration. So we have this absolute time one. And we can just pass that in since it is able to take an array. We can just pass a single item. So this item added to the cache will expire from in five hours. Now a real simple one that is the default is to never expire. So we can make a variable called never and we'll just do a new never expired. And this doesn't make a lot of sense here, but you might use this if you are using this overload because you want to set the caching priority or maybe you have a refresh action. So then maybe you would pass in never here. And so this item would never expire from the cache. And again, this doesn't mean that it can't be removed. It can still be scavenged from the cache unless we had set this cache item priority to be not removable. Then it could never be removed from the cache. So the last one we're going to look at in this module is a sliding one. So let's go ahead and create a variable called sliding and we'll do a new sliding time. And you can see here that this also takes a time span. So let's go ahead and do a time span dot from seconds and we'll do 100. So what this will do is if we use this one, we can put in sliding here. The item is going to expire if it hasn't been accessed for this amount of time, this time span. Every time someone gets this item from the cache, it resets this time. So it becomes a sliding time so that you're getting rid of data that's not being used very frequently. So you can set this to whatever kind of time span that you want. We can also change this absolute time 
instead of being a time span, we can specify an exact date. You can see this takes a date time. So we could create a new date time and we could specify the year, month, day, and it would expire on this exact time. So those are some of the basic policies that you're most likely to use. There's a couple of other policies. We're going to get to that in the advanced caching module because they're a little bit less used and a little bit more complex to explain. But these are the typical ones that you'll see and use most of the time is typically the absolute time or the sliding time or just the default of never expiring. So let's go ahead and test out our sliding time here. Let's go ahead and actually make it so that this cache is going to expire from 10 seconds from the last time it was accessed. So what we'll do here is we'll write out our original data and we'll go ahead and grab our sliding data and we'll just call this data2. This is demo2. And so we'll access this, we'll write this out, and then we'll do a thread dot sleep and we'll go ahead and sleep for about 20 seconds here. Then we'll go ahead and try to get this data out of the cache again. And we'll go ahead and say else console dot right line data was gone. So basically what we're going to be doing here is we're going to get our items out of the cache, our first item, our second item. It's going to reset this time of the expiration. And then we're going to sleep for 20 seconds. When we try to get it out the second time, it should be gone. And so let's make sure before we run this that we're doing data two on these ones. So I'll go ahead and run this. And you can see that here's our first demo data and then our other data. And we're sleeping right now in this thread, so it's going to take 20 seconds. And we'll fast forward a little bit here. And so now you can see that after that time had passed, our data was gone because it had expired. And we can change this demonstration if we only sleep for, let's say, three seconds. And run it. Now you can see we're sleeping here and we get the data. So it has not expired.